This video will discuss the diagonalization of Hermitian matrices. Okay, so from some previous videos in this chapter, we've discussed how, let's see, need to underline that one. Let's go ahead and underline that O. All right, we've discussed how we can have an operator, which is represented in a given basis set of a bunch of uh, different basis vectors. So what transforms a matrix from one basis set to another is what's called a unitary transformation, which is a change of basis. So a unitary matrix was defined as a matrix whose adjoint is equal to its inverse. The adjoint of a matrix being uh, flip the off diagonal elements and take the complex conjugate. So the, the adjoint was the inverse, so an adjoint times itself equals an identity matrix, matrix where you have ones on the diagonal and zeros off the diagonal. So we have in one representation the matrix O, and if we find the unitary matrix, which is the overlap of the different basis vectors in the two different representations, we can represent um, the matrix O in another basis as omega, by doing a unitary transformation, the matrix multiplication U dagger, U O. And we can do the back transformation, getting it back to the original basis set as O, as U omega U dagger. Okay, and typically what we're going to be talking about here is some Hermitian matrix, which is square and N by N. So it's an N dimensional Hermitian matrix. All right, so there's another matrix which we'll talk about here called little a. I'll call it little a. And this is the matrix A in a basis set in which A is diagonal. So what we want here is we have little a is equal to a unitary transformation of A where this U is the unique unitary matrix which is going to diagonalize A. So A when it's diagonalized is just going to be a bunch of values down the diagonal and zeros off the diagonal. So a, the elements of A will be Aij equals omega i, the ith eigenvalue, times the Kronecker delta, one when you're on the diagonal and zero off of it. So these omega are all the eigenvalues of A, so if you can find this unitary matrix which diagonalizes which diagonalizes our Hermitian matrix A, then the diagonal elements are all of the eigenvalues. So if you can diagonalize a matrix, you have all of the eigenvalues. Okay, so those are the eigenvalues, but what about the eigenvectors? So eigenvector alpha, which has some uh, component i, so eigenvector alpha component i is a sum of j equals 1 to n of some coefficients in each uh, basis vector. Because remember, alpha is a vector. It's represented in terms of whatever basis vectors we're representing a in. So j is a bunch of orthonormal basis vectors. Alpha are the, all the orthonormal eigenvectors of our matrix. So cij. Um, of the ith, so the jth element of the ith eigenvector, that's going to be equal to some matrix uij, and that is actually going to be a unitary matrix, which is a matrix of all of the eigenvectors of A. So each column in this matrix is going to be an individual eigenvector of A, and there will be uh, n rows because each eigenvector has n uh, as n elements, and then there are n eigenvectors, so there are n columns. <clears throat> that in its entirety gives you this unitary matrix. So there's kind of a chicken and an egg problem here in that if we have the eigen, if we have the unitary matrix, then we can get the eigenvector. The, sorry, if we have the unitary matrix, we can get the eigenvalues because we can diagonalize A through a unitary transformation and the diagonal elements are all the eigenvalues. But these U's are all of the eigenvectors. So this unitary matrix, this overlap between the two basis sets are actually the eigenvectors of our matrix. 
So if we want to find the eigenvalues, we find um, the diagonal representation. If we want to find the diagonal representation, we find the unitary matrix which diagonalizes A. And the unitary matrix which diagonalizes A is actually the eigenvectors of A. So typically, if you have some n by n Hermitian matrix, there will be some computational libraries that we could hook up a program to, and they would be able to tell us what this U matrix is. And more often than not, uh, you don't want to you know, write a routine to solve this yourself. Typically, for some matrix, it'll, it'll give you actually what all these eigenvectors are, what all these eigenvalues are. And the entire uh, problem of finding these is actually coding up what is this matrix itself. And then beyond there, we just let all the pre-installed, uh, pre-optimized, uh, very fast libraries go to work in finding whatever eigenvalues and eigenvectors we want to find whenever we find them for a matrix of interest.